go ahead and get started. Um, I know we got some that's recouping from some health issues and some uh, ailments, and we're glad to see y'all this morning. Um, so, at this first one, if you want to stand up, sing, stand up, sing. If you want to sit down and sing, sit down and sing. I, if you go, if you need to lay down and get comfortable, whatever you need to do. So, we're gonna miss Miss Rachel. How's your foot this morning? You you kicking over there this morning? No, not very hard. You don't kick too hard. Well, that's fine. <laughs>
y'all sing? That's my favorite part. What am I singing? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm gonna dance. Just pray. <laughs> we like you praying. <laughs> Gotta have a little fun, right? Exactly. Uh, Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, Father. Thank you for those that are here. Lord, those that may be traveling for the holiday weekend, Father, I ask for your blessings that you would keep them safe. And Lord, for those that are not here, Father, for whatever reason. Lord, thank you so much for the blessings you've bestowed upon us, Father, those that we've already received and those that we know are yet to come, Father. Lord, in a world filled with so much evil and wickedness, Lord, I just ask that you would be the light into this darkness, Father. Let us do our part to love and to share the good news of the gospel. Lord, we thank you and we ask for your protection, your wisdom and knowledge. Let us be reminded to seek you daily through the reading of your word, through prayer, and through time of solitude. We just ask all this in your son's precious name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> well, a couple weeks ago I did um, a Christmas hymn. And uh, so I decided I was going to do another Christmas today. I said, no, let's do a different We're going to do a resurrection one this morning. You know, we don't have to wait for just Easter or Christmas to do these. So. This one's going to test your singing, your singing skills.
He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was upon Him. By His wounds, by His wounds we are healed. We are healed by Your sacrifice. Remember the
of those that I'm thankful for te te technology. Technology. Um, because that's one that I don't remember singing growing up. And because I don't read music, it's hard for me to pull those, make it sound right. But I was able to find it and listen to it. And then it was, so, I mean, it's some of those that I've never, I used to didn't sing when I was a kid because we just didn't sing them. You had them sing once you sang all the time, kind of like we do. Um, you know, you, you, you sing what the, pian the piano player and the pianist um, and the music director knows, so yeah. Song the, the song leader. The song leader is what we used to have. That's right, we had a song leader. We had a song leader. Um, all right, let's run through the announcements. Um, don't forget we have uh, Sunday school at 10 o'clock. We'll have that start back again next Sunday. Um, Starling and them are having a safe trip this weekend. Um, 11 o'clock morning worship and 6 o'clock Facebook live Bible study. 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights, um, prayer meeting in the social hall. Um, this prayer guide is in the uh, vestibule. If you want to pick one of those up, it's um, a prayer guide for the missions. It's Missions Georgia Prayer Guide. Use that to pray for our state missions. And there's a, it's, it's, a, it's a good little guide that you can kind of follow and specifics to pray for and why to pray for. This so, month is state missions. This month. Um, so those are in the vestibule out right there on the table along with the new literature um, for the quarter. So uh, be sure to pick those up and take those home with you. Um, today we, of course, didn't have Sunday school and we won't have an evening Bible study this evening. So next Sunday we will have communion. And um, also have our fellowship lunch after the morning service. So don't forget that. Come be prepared to eat and enjoy some fellowship time after we have church Sunday morning. Somebody I knew, and we were talking about ages, and he said, you got to be at least 25. And I said, mm, yeah, flip it, but yeah. <laughs> flip it. But, um, and uh, June's got a birthday coming up toward the end of the month, so we'll celebrate her when it gets closer. And nobody decided to get married in September. I guess it wasn't the time to get married. So, anyway, um, anything else? Yeah. I knew you was going to have something. <laughs> what you got? I'm working on the latest shift. Oh, yeah, I forgot to text you back. Yeah. I responded in my head. I did. I was I was at school, and I read it, and I thought, and I responded in my head. But yes, and yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I was just going to say, if I have a contact, if you, and you do want to do something, please let me know. Okay. If you feel led to do something, um, you might get voluntold to do something. And, you know, we try to, you might get volunteered or voluntold or something. So, um if you um, are not on a, in a leadership position, and you might you might get asked, and if you feel led to do it, please accept it. If you feel like you just absolutely are not led to do it, don't be afraid to say no, but definitely pray about it and try to jump in wherever we can. Um, so, anything else? Everybody good? All right, Miss Kathy, you want to share your lesson this morning? Or you want to save it for another day? I think I'll You'll save it. I'm gonna save it. It must be a good one then. It is. All right, well, we'll save it for another. We'll save it for I have to say a rainy day. Um, but definitely thankful that we skirted by the worst of the weather too. Um, Valdosta obviously didn't fare as well, but um, we are thankful that we got some much needed rain. I think Wendell said we got like over three inches in our house, and it was a slow, steady rain all day. So that was definitely something we needed. So, all right. Well, if that's the case, we will move on to our offertory hymn, and it's going to be two sixty one. It's going to be on the screen, and. Um, Let's stand and sing it.
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to come to your house, Father, and study your word. And Father, for the ones that are not here this morning, for whatever reason, whether it's sickness or travel or whatever, we just ask you to put your loving arms around them and, and be with them wherever they are, Father. Father, we now as we come to the part of the service where we give back just a small portion of what you so richly blessed us with, that we ask you to take these offerings, use them for your benefit, Father. And in Jesus' name I pray, amen. <laughs> Finding myself at loss for words, and the funny thing is, it's okay. The last thing I need is to be heard, but to hear what you would say. Oh, yeah. 
Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Glad to see everybody. Hope y'all enjoying the last of the cooler weather because I think it's supposed to get warm next week again. Um, and there's another storm brewing out there, so who knows what it's going to do. But it could come into Florida, Georgia, looking at it. But it's way off, so we don't have to worry about that anytime soon, hopefully. All right. And I did post a U version link this morning. <laughs> so it is there if you want to click on that and follow along, or if you got the app, you can just click events and follow along there with scripture and stuff such as that. Um, and then I've been posting the uh, service usually on Monday mornings once I get the videos combined and uploaded. So if you're not here and you want to watch it, it should be there on Monday mornings. Uh, if you know somebody that needs to hear the message, you can share it with them, and they can certainly watch along. Scripture will be up there this morning, most of it anyway. Um, remember my theme for this year is being obedient to God, something that we all need to do. So over the past several weeks, we spent some time talking about the signs that, that indicated the end times. This morning, I'm going to change gears a little bit. I'm going to talk about the rapture. And that's going to lead into the next, the next little series that I'm going to do starting next Sunday. It's also going to lead into a new Bible study we're going to do on Wednesday nights. Uh, I was going to start it this Wednesday, but there's some potential on the schedule conflict for Wednesday night. I didn't want to start something if I wasn't sure I was going to be here. But I'll talk about that in, in depth uh, next Sunday because um, there will be some questions that you'll need ahead of time, some scripture. Uh, but we'll get into that next Sunday, but I think we'll enjoy it. So, Paul gives us a glimpse of the rapture and what it actually means for Christians in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. And in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. The rapture will encompass the resurrection of dead believers and the transformation of living believers, all of whom will be changed. They will be escorted to heaven, where they will experience the judgment seat of Christ, where rewards will be handed out for faithful service. There will be praise and worship like nothing that's ever been witnessed here on earth. And with the most recent hurricane, I dare you, that hit Florida this past week, there was an evacuation order. Some people listened, some didn't. But that order was issued for the areas that would likely be impacted the hardest by the storm. But you'd imagine if a person missed that call to evacuate and were left behind to endure the severe storm and the devastation that was coming and the aftermath. And just like the folks in the path of the storm, many of them are hard-headed. They don't want to listen. They don't want to leave. They think that they're, you know, they're going to do what they want to do no matter what. That anything goes attitude that you've heard me talk about the past few weeks. But they were told to evacuate or be left behind. That help likely couldn't get to them. And those who are Christ followers and have a relationship with God will one day also be evacuated so that we avoid the devastation that will come in the end times read Revelation, you know what's coming. And I believe that based on the scripture that those who are right with the Lord and have that relationship with him will be removed prior to the devastation that the world is going to face. In Revelation 3.10 Since you have kept my command to endure patiently I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come on the whole world to test the inhabitants of the earth. We'll go to 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and through 18. First Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. It says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. According to the Lord's word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven 
with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. And there are several truths concerning the rapture that we can take away from Paul's letter to the church in Thessalonica. It will be a signless event. There's not going to be a big billboard or, or a big emergency broadcast over the, the emergency broadcast system that says, the Lord's coming tomorrow, y'all be ready. It's not going to be like that. It's not going to be any advance warning. It's going to happen. And we know that only God himself knows that. And we need to realize that there's not going to be those special signs warning us that the rapture is about to happen. Now, we've got signs that I've been talking about that we should be paying attention that, you know, we're getting closer and closer. But there's not going to be that big sign that says the rapture is going to happen today. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen like that. It's going to be like a thief in the night, just like we talked about last week. It can occur at any moment. I mean, it could occur today. It could occur tomorrow. We just don't know. And because we don't know, we got to be ready. But what we do know is Christ is going to return. That's why it's so important that we're ready and we're prepared and we have that relationship. And we know our salvation is secure. There's things that we need to do in preparation. Just like when the hurricane was going to hit Florida and the evacuation order was issued, those folks had to prepare they knew they were going to have to evacuate. They needed to prepare their homes. They needed to get their affairs in order. So we, as believers, need to have our affairs in order and make sure that our relationship with Christ is right and that our salvation is secure. In Titus 2.13, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, got to be patient, but we know it's coming. It's going to be a surprise event. The Bible doesn't give us specific details about the exact time of the return of Christ and the rapture. Again, I can't stress this enough. That's why it's so important for us to be ready at all times. Because you never know when your time is going to come. You never know when the page is going to turn and the Lord is going to call you. You never know. We know that the rapture is going to be like that thief in the night. In 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 and 2. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you. For you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. In Matthew 24, 36. But about that day or hour, no one knows. Not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son but only the Father. Read that again. But about that day or hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Now, there are many out there that claim to know when the exact time is. They, they, they put this stuff out there. On this day, the Lord's going to return. This is when it's going to happen. We know that's, not, that's, that's just not the case. Only the Father himself knows. And those are the folks we need to be weary of. Those are the folks that we might need to share the good news of the gospel with because they're going down a path that's, that's going to lead to destruction because it's false teachings, because Scripture is very clear that not even the angels nor the Son, but only the Father, the only one that knows. And that comes right out of God's Word. And that's the only truth that we should be concerned with is what God's Word tells us. It's going to be a selective event. Not everybody's going to get raptured up. Not everybody's going to make it into heaven. And this event's going to be reserved for family members only. Some might be asking, well, who are these family members then? It's very simple. It's the family of believers. Those who have put their faith in Christ. Those that have that relationship, those that truly believe and have done right by the Lord and, and, and are living the life 
they should be living. This means that those that are Christ followers and who have that relationship, that he knows you and you know him, you've got to have a relationship. In John 14, 1 and 3, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you, be with me, that you also may be where I am. 1 Corinthians 15, 23. But each in turn, Christ, the first fruits then, when he comes, those who belong to him. As you can see, Scripture tells us that this, the rapture will be exclusively for members of the family, which we know are believers only. Ask yourself, are you part of the family? You know, it's like they have that special sale for members only. You get the good deals. We got a great deal coming, but we got to be a member of the family, and we got to be a part of the family. Because if we're not, we're going to get some deals that we don't really want. Uh, so, but that's, that's a decision, a choice that you have to make. And you have to be right with the Lord in your heart. I can't do it for you. And it's going to happen in order. So look at first, and this won't be up there. 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17 tells us. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. With the rapture, it will be Jesus himself that is coming as told to the disciples by the two angels when Jesus ascended. In Acts 1.11, Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. Man, what a glorious day that's going to be. We wasn't there to see him go up. We'll be there to see him come down. Or at least I hope so. I hope everybody will make the decision so they can witness that and be a part of that. If Jesus is to return in the same way he left, then we can expect his return to be personal and physical. Resurrection. 1 Thessalonians 4, 15 and 16. According to the Lord's word, we tell you, that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Scripture tells us that the dead in Christ will be taken first. So he returns from heaven with a shout. He will start by summoning those who are asleep. And sleep is referring to, to the dead. And those who are dead in Jesus will not be left out of the rapture. So your loved ones who have gone on before you, they're going to experience it before we do. And, and they're going to be raptured up. And redemption. First Thessalonians 4, 15 and 17. According to the Lord's word, we will tell you that we who are still alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. Verse 17. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. And after those who are sleeping or dead are resurrected, believers who are alive, will rise to meet Christ in the air. We will experience the same transformation as those who were asleep. We will become like the resurrected Christ and gain our glorious body. Now, what that glorious body? You ain't going to be able to pick and choose now. 
You ain't going to get a, a order form what you want your body to be like. But I can promise you, it's going to be glorious. And we're all going to want it. So just be prepared and, and know why anybody wouldn't want to, to accept Christ, knowing that they're going to have a new body and they're going to go, go to heaven. And there's not going to be any more pain and any more suffering. And it's going to be glorious. I just, I don't understand why anybody wouldn't want to believe that. In 1 Corinthians 15, 51 and 52, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed. In a flash, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound. The dead will be raised, imperishable, and we will be changed. Can you imagine to hear that trumpet? That's going to be the sign that we all want to hear. That trumpet, knowing we're about to be called up with Jesus and to receive a glorious body. In Philippians 3.21, who, by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control, will transform our lowly bodies so that they will be like his glorious body. Do we really know what his body was like? Have we ever seen an actual picture of Jesus? I mean, we've all seen the pictures that are depicted, but do we really know, since we weren't there, what he really looked like. But we can imagine that he, that he had a glorious body. A body that we all desire to have. A body full of strength, good health. A glorious, glorious body. Just imagine the, the ideal body that you could envision that you would want to have today and multiply that because you know it's going to be better. know it's going to be better. And you know there's not going to be any more pain, any more hurting, or any more brokenness. It will be a strengthening event. In 1 Thessalonians 4.18 Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So we're, we're being told that we need to encourage one another with these words going to happen people throughout scripture throughout the Old Testament throughout the New Testament we're given these signs we're given these prophecies and I've talked about it the last several weeks some of them have already happened some of them are happening now and there's still more to come but we should encourage others don't be afraid to have the conversations with people yeah, you're going to get some negative comments. But we've still got to love and encourage others. That's what Jesus did. Imagine all the negative comments that we read about that Jesus received. Being what he went through, but he never gave up. Imagine the ones that didn't make it into the written word of God. Probably some language that we didn't need in the Bible that, that, that Jesus endured persecution that we will endure. But that's part of it. We're told that we're going to endure that. And it should be a blessing when we do. And we should be eager to go out and do our part and share the good news of the Gospels. And don't get upset when people attack you and call you bad names and, and all this other stuff. You know, I got one of those comments this morning. For over a year I've been posting Coffee and Devotion on, on multiple social media platforms. And I got my first negative comment on TikTok this morning. And I will respond, but I'm going to respond in a way that I'm going to use it as a ministry opportunity. But that's what we should be prepared for. Encourage one another with these words. We can't be scared 
to encourage one another. We can't be scared to share the good news of the gospels. If, if the Lord puts somebody before you, it's for a reason. Pray about it. He will give you the words to speak. You don't have to be a preacher. You don't have to be a deacon to do that. The disciples were not preachers, but they shared the good news of the gospel. We, you, can all do that. Take the time to do it. We're running out of time, people. And people need to realize that it will change their lives if they, accept, if they decide to accept the Lord. But I can't make that decision for you. You can't make that decision for them. But you can certainly come alongside of them. And ultimately that decision is between them and the Lord. But it will change your lives. This book will change your lives. Time and time again I've heard testimony of how people's lives were changed when they accepted Christ. How the Lord has worked in their lives. And sometimes it's your very own testimony that may bring somebody to know the Lord. Because what better truth and what better advertising than how the Lord is working our own very lives. How the Lord has worked in your life. How the Lord has done things for you. And don't leave out the bad parts because they're part of it. Because if you've got a relationship with the Lord, you're going to have those bad things too. It's not going to all be glorious. Don't leave out the bad stuff. People need to know. But that's part of it. Nowhere in the Bible does it say we're going to have a life without troubles. We're told that we're going to have them. So when you, when you minister to people and, and you encourage them with these words, give them the bad. Give them the good. Let them know what to expect. But the rapture is going to change our life. And it's a source of comfort and hope and it's one reason I think that Paul wrote to the Thessalonians about it. It was a way to ease a concern about their loved ones who had passed away. And that death was not final. And for those that had lost loved ones as a thing of death. And be comforting knowing that we will see them again if they are a believer in Christ. It's also a source of strength just as Jesus promised his disciples that he would return. But, and while waiting for the rapture, our lives can be affected. We should be expecting it. We should be expecting it. In Titus 2, 11 through 14, For the grace of God has appeared. While we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, <clears throat> who gave himself for us to redeem us from all wickedness and to purify for himself a people that are his very own, eager to do what is good. We should be expecting this. We should be eager. But we need to examine ourselves. And God has given us the warnings loud and clear. Scripture's full of it. I've talked about many of them. Jesus warns us. That he's coming quickly. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? You ain't going to have time to pack your bags. It's going to be quick. Like a twinkling of an eye. In Revelation 22, 12. Look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me. And I will give to each person according to what they have done. I am coming soon. Now, his soon and our soon obviously are not the same thing. But we know he's coming. Ask yourself this question. Have you committed yourself by faith to Christ so you are sure of being part of his church when it's called into the presence of the rapture? Because when the rapture occurs, there will be no more opportunity to make that decision. So be sure today that you've said yes to Christ and you will be prepared to rejoice at his appearing. We've got to quit procrastinating. You can't say, well, I'll do it tomorrow. Well, I'll do it next week. There may not be a tomorrow. There may not be a next week. The 
You know that this earth is going to be full with misery and devastation. We know it. Scripture tells us. But as a believer, we avoid that by being evacuated. But our names have to be on the list of those who will hear the trumpet call of the rapture by turning to Christ and to live a pure and holy life, characteristics of those that will enter into heaven. If your name is not in the Lamb's book of life when the rapture occurs, you will be left behind to experience the devastation and misery of which will be worse than anything we've yet to see here on this earth. If you haven't done what it takes to hear the trumpet call and to have your name in the Lamb's book of life, please don't wait another day to do it. Imagine this. You show up at a fancy schmancy restaurant with all your friends and family and you walk up there to the, the concierge or whatever they call them, the hostess, and you say, I'm here for reservations. Well, what's your name? And they look. Your name's not on the list. Do you want to be that person? Because if you're not there, you're not getting in. In Revelation 21, 27, nothing impure will ever enter it, nor will anyone who does not what who does what is shameful or deceitful. Mm -hmm but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Make sure your name's in that book. Make sure you're prepared. Make sure you're ready. Try to have that relationship. I love each and every one of you. Hope you have a good week. And peace and blessings to you. If anybody needs prayer, I'll be down front. I'll close us out in a word of Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity to stand up and bring the, the message this morning, Father. Lord, it's a message that's not often preached about, Father. Just like hell. Many preachers have turned away from hell. It's like a bad word. Lord, that's what we should be talking about. Folks need to know what's coming. That hell is a real place. That this world will be full devastation and suffering and as followers of Christ Lord we need to be prepared for your return when the rapture happens so that we know where we're going we need to make sure that we've got that relationship that our salvation is secure and our name is in the Lamb's book of life that our reservation is secure that our name is on that list Lord let us do our part by spending time reading your word, spending time in prayer, making sure that we are saved. Let us do our part to go out into the, the world that is filled with wickedness and evil and hatred and to share the love that your son has for us with others, to share the good news of the gospels, to be that light into the darkness so others may see, others may come to believe and know you before it's too late because we know it's coming and we know it's coming quickly and there will be many left behind Lord prepare us to do what you call us to do prepare us to go forth and serve you Lord thank you for the blessings that we've received and those that we know are yet to come Father for that glorious day when we're all called up we receive our glorious bodies and our new homes in heaven. A glorious day it will be, Father. Let us be prepared. Father, so many here in our church family, our own families and our community need your healing touch, Father. All healing, Lord, we know comes through you and by you, Father, the great physician. So, Lord, I ask that if it's your will, you lay your hands upon these individuals, Father, each and every one of them. Heal their bodies, remove any sickness or disease. Repair any injury or brokenness, Father. Speak words of encouragement and let them know you're there. They're not alone and they are loved. Give them strength. Give them hope. Lord, for those that may have unspoken prayers, those that may be struggling and have other needs, and those that may be in a dark place, Father. Lord, if it's your will, bless them. Provide for their needs. Be the light in the darkness. 
Give them strength and hope and comfort. Lord, continue to bless our little church, Father. Let us continue to serve you in a way that's pleasing. That everything that we do as a church be in the furtherance of your kingdom. Let us do our part. Lord, we're so grateful that we know you. And we're so grateful for everything that you've already done and that you're going to do, Father. We're so grateful that we're part of that family. Lord, I just ask all these things in your son's precious holy name. Amen.
Darlene, that was spot on. It was. That was great. Sorry for the impromptu start of it while y'all was trying to find it and get it pulled. <laughs> it's okay. Amen. You know, I, I think about when Jesus called. You know, nowadays, if, if, if somebody calls you, they use a the phone. But I remember as a child growing up, if Mama needed me, she would holler for me. Right. She would holler for you. Yeah. And that's, you know, as a child, you're like, well, I don't know. Did I hear? Oh, I didn't hear. I'll play five more minutes. And then that call got a little louder. Well, this is a call. When, when Jesus calls, you want to make sure you hear. You don't want to be ignoring it. You want to be ready. It's good stuff. That's good stuff. Any praise reports, prayer requests? Um, I have one pray, uh, prayer request. Um, Jace Williams, he is Amber and um, can't name her name. Her daddy was Stevie Walters. Um, it's Amber's daughter. Her son broke his leg, and he is in Savannah. There, he was in surgery about an hour ago. Um, he has some other. You should help issues and, and things also. So just be a prayer for that family because he's, as she said, he looked forward to open season, the open day of the dove season yesterday. He was looking forward, all, looking forward to it all week. But he is in surgery for um, his leg. So just be a prayer that he will have a successful surgery and a quick recovery on that. And he's really young. He's like nine. nine he's, a, he's a young fellow, young fellow. Um, so just, just be a prayer for them. Remember the family of the young boy that was killed last week that went to Tweezer Canyon. Uh, I think he was a senior mm -hmm. over there. He was. He was 17. And his mom was the headmaster. His mom was the like headmaster. Right. My understanding is the other boy has been sent home from the hospital. That's yes. what I heard. And we, I saw yesterday they had another, yeah, there was another fatality at 18 and 57 yeah. yesterday. Somebody, Somebody was killed. killed. I don't know who it was that 18 was. 18 to 243 up there. Oh, okay. Call on 18. Somebody mm -hmm. came. Is that the same place that the coward boy was killed? I think so. Yes. I think I mean, so. That's not like this from down here. Mm -hmm. It is. It's red light around by something. Yeah. I had a right down here that was yesterday. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I don't think it was. Mm -hmm. Somebody came across 18, didn't, they didn't stop or something, they didn't stop or something happened and went on 243, then the passage door is where I read. Anybody else? Glad to have Brother Anthony back. Yeah, Continue to pray for his recovery. And Miss Peggy, mm -hmm. continue to be in prayer for her. I appreciate all the prayers, and I am better. Got slow, re it's a slow recovery, it seems like, but I'm getting there. Absolutely. We know there's power in prayer. Yeah. Well, nobody else has anything. Brother Anthony, would you mind dismissing us in a word of prayer? Lord Jesus, we just thank you for this day and thank you for what it's gone out. Lord, I know there's a lot of people need to come to church and get what they're visiting. I'm sure all of us need some uplift, Lord, sometimes. 